and you're watching Fox Netball. We have the last game of round 14, Suncorp Super Netball season before the finals get started. It's the no, it's Magpies taking on the Melbourne Vixens on your screen. Let's get to the Woolworths team card, Katie, because there has been a lot of changes. A lot going on. The one change for the Vixens is that Rani Samerson, that extra firepower in the super shot, is on the bench there for them. Uh, but let's get cross over to the Magpies because there's COVID chaos um, <laughs> wreaked havoc on their lineup again. So we see Zoe Davies in uh, for Maggie Lind. We have got Casey Adamson who has come in. Um, she'll be starting at wing defence there. Um, a debut for her, one of the Magpies training partners. Jackie Newton has shifted across to that goal defence position because Jodie Ann Ward is out, Bianca. Um, we also see, obviously, Gabby Sinclair, but the huge in, Renee Ingalls. Oh, Ash Brazel out, Renee Ingalls in. Renee Ingalls has not played for three years. Her last game was with the Melbourne Vixens in 2019. She came home from Utah last week, played one game of VNL, not expecting to be getting the call up into Suncorp Super Netball. And as you see Casey Adamson on your screen now for the Magpie, she is making her debut and what a game to do it. Standing next to Liz Watson, the captain of the Australian Diamonds, the co-captain of the Melbourne Vixens. And there is Jeeva Mentor, the captain of the Magpies. A big shout out to Nicole Richardson who says she's pacing around. She just texted me to say she's pacing around at home because she's also out. And Kate Upton, the assistant coach of Magpies, has stepped into the coaching role for today's game. Here we go. It all comes down to this game. Hello to the New South Wales Swifts who are watching very eagerly to see what happens. Nixon, start off. Magpies, a quick turnover. Exactly the way that they would want to start it onto those loose balls. Garvin. Hold centre. Yes. Finds Jovic in the middle. Straight up to Nelson. And that one on one, you could see Sophie Garvin just take an extra wide entry there to leave that one on one with Nelson. She has been so dominant these last few rounds. We'll keep reminding you if you have a look on your screens, it's the live ladder as it sits at the moment. A lot can happen, but just to simplify it, if the Magpies win, they are in. They get that fourth position. But if the Magpies lose, then they've got a bit of a two to three goal buffer around about that they can lose by to still make it. But it all depends on the scoreline. As the Vixens can't control it, but get it back through Mannix. A lot of anxious energy, you can feel it already. In a, in a huge crowd, it's a sold out crowd here at John Kane Arena. 10,000 people, it's going to okay, get loud. I'm sure the crowd will this come side. into it at some point, won't they? <laughs> oh, they sure will. And for the Magpies, they're not used to playing in front of such a huge crowd. A lot of players on the court. Casey Adamson playing her first game. This is huge. How much pressure does that add? A, a, a lot of pressure, but I, I guess they would have the mindset of, you've got a job to do, get out and do it. And it's, I guess it's kind of that energy and all part of it. Um, I expect that there will probably be some tired bodies from some of the adrenaline that's pumping through their veins at the moment. Kamwenda steps in, finds Austin. An easy shot usually for Kira Austin, this one. Magpies through Jovic. Brown to Adamson. Back to Brown. Jovic wants to get rid of it quickly. They look straight up to Nelson. You can see her hand up in the background in front position. And scores are even. Two from two there for Nelson. Straight out of the gates. Eddie to Watson. The Vixens all on one side. They swing it across. Again, they go across. Dangerous passing in attack for the Vixens. From pocket to pocket, usually you like one of your middies at the top of the circle. And Kira Austin makes it three. Let's go across to our sideline reporter, Maddie Brown. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Um, it's nice to be down here on the sideline. I guess what I wanted to 
speak about was the Magpies and the Vixens both doing a flood defence on the centre pass. So just watch the goal attack and the wing attack flooding down, putting that extra hands over pressure. It's where the Magpies got a little tip in that first centre pass. So they're trying to take up space, trying to get some little tips to balls as they flood down, trying to shut down those spaces. And one thing we know, the teams that adjust to those changes quickly, Maddie, is usually the team that starts getting ahead. You've got to keep an eye on it. The decision making out there for this playing group that's so important. Oh, Liz Watson with the one hand of take off the floor. Uh, what, she, what, what was she called for there, Katie? So you can't actually gain possession of the ball while you are on the ground. Um, so um, you, you can put the ball down and stand up and then re and, and then gain possession of it. But what, as she was on the ground, as we see another turnover, the Vixens fighting hard to get that one back. Mannix in front position, pulls in the intercept. Vixens back into attack. Weston, always ready to go if they need to go back to her. Austin to Eddie, back to Watson. They can't go forward. Brilliant defense from the Magpies. Hands over, they're making it hard for the Vixens to see an option, to see a clear option in attack. And great big hands over from Adamson there. From Wenda, they find the space. <laughs> Brown to Garbin, up the middle. Jovic looks straight in. Garbin for her second. Can't sink it. And the Vixens, that is a plus for them to pull in the ball early. Maloney to Weston. A little trip, it goes over to Austin. Maloney flies down onto the edge. Jeeva Mentor in front position. She timed it perfectly. MJ just sticking her hand up. She wanted it higher, that ball, as we see Jeeva on the Harvey Norman replay. Just getting that tip. Great positioning from her, confusing that space of the ball that came in. Been a lot of talk about Jeeva Mentor and her game as a defender. As a 37-year-old, she's doing incredibly well and her game has really picked up in the last few weeks. Definitely has. She so said she's not ready to retire. An experienced <laughs> campaigner that is sticking her hands up. She's played finals. She's won finals. Um, she will be trying to impart all of that knowledge on some of these young ones out there. Scores are even. We've got under 10 minutes to play in the first quarter. Austin. Getting the radar on early is Kira Austin. And unusually, she's shot the bulk of the goals for the Vixens so far. Kamwenda, just the one. Brown finds Nelson. Nelson not comfortable, a bit of a give and go. Gives the Vixens a chance to get a hand to the ball. If you have a look at the deflection stat on your screen, two to the Vixens at the moment. As Nelson steps across, blocks Mannix, and sinks the shot. Weston to Eddie. This is that flood defence that Maddie was talking about, just congesting that middle third, really struggling to get the ball down into that attack third. And they've slowed it down and it actually causes a uh, bit of a disruption as we see the coaches there. Kate Upton stepping in as head coach for her second game as head coach. And Simone McInnes, the Melbourne Vixens coach. Even though the Melbourne Vixens have a spot in the finals, they've finished top, they're the minor premiers. This game means a lot to them. Last time the Magpies won by 10. It hurts when you lose the Melbourne Derby. It definitely does. There's a lot of feeling between these two teams. Uh, and the fact that the Magpies have won the last three encounters, Bianca, the Vixens will be well aware of that and will be wanting to get one up on their opponents. But also for their finals campaign, every single one of these girls wants to be finding that confidence in their form. Huge take from Nelson. The feed from Garvin to Nelson, that connection. And then add in Gabby Sinclair, who is at the moment on the bench. But look at the Harvey Norman replay. Great placement. 
Wende out of the circle. Gets it to Maloney. Austin doing a huge amount of work on the baseline, but they haven't sighted her. Adamson just contesting there on the outside. Nicole Richardson has coached Casey Adamson a lot in Victorian state team, so very familiar with her as a player. And there will be clear instructions, I'm sure, of, of what she is responsible for. We see she just takes that centre pass, and that's one thing that I think the Magpies will miss not having Ash Braz in their lineup. She took 20 centre passes last week, Bianca, so she is a huge out for them, not only in defence, but in terms of their attack. So Adamson's go, going to need to fill those big shoes in the attack as well. And she's bringing the physicality onto court already. For a young, inexperienced player, she's showing her dominance. Magpies leading by two. The Vixens, they usually find the circle edge, but they're struggling. Just struggling to link up with one of their goalers. Both of their goalers getting stuck in behind and the middies having to play it between themselves to work that ball through. It's a sneaky little feed just gets through there from Liz Watson. If we look at the Harvey Norman replay, this is what I mean. Eddie straight onto Brown. Every ball contested. Brown bounces it to Garvin. Last time these two teams played, it was an absolute bounce pass fest. <laughs> the Magpies were just so dominant using the low space. They weren't worrying about lifting it high. They were, and the, the speed of ball that allowed them to do that as well. Obviously, last time they played, Joe Weston took the wing defense bib, so a uh, shorter player with Kelsey Brown taking on a, a taller player and deciding to actually go underneath it was an effective tactic for them. The Vixens bring the score back to within one. Magpies in possession. At the moment, if we look at the live ladder, the Magpies winning by one, that means they will take that fourth spot in the finals. We're in the power five. The Suncorp super shot is in play. These two teams, they don't use it often. They only use it when they need it. From Wenda straight away, she wants it. Brilliant shot from Welcome Wenda. And the crowd here are loving it. Let's go across to Maddie Brown. Anyone warming up on the sidelines? Yeah, it's quite interesting. I guess we'll put, hit that power five time and I can see Rani Samerson, whether it's just her keeping her body moving and keeping warm on the sideline. Olivia Lewis has also got up and started to move her feet a little bit. I mean, Vixens are obviously in control, but they've also got that score power in the Suncorp Super Queen, I guess, in Rani Samerson sitting there ready to go whenever they need. Maddie, she tries to get it. She was in the right position, but... Nelson is in strong form. What we've seen from her all season. Adamson out of play. Watson free to roam on her own. Fakes it one way, finds Kamwenda up high. Kamwenda wanting more from her teammates, more from the crowd. Shooting at 100%. Two goals, the difference. Up they go to Nelson. And the Magpies get back within one. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. Austin flies to Watson, there's too much on it. And a lucky pick up from Kawenda. There just seems to be a lot more uh, on the ball for the Vixens. They're usually quite calm and content moving it around. They just seem to be a little bit out of control. Yeah, probably just taking them a moment to settle. We just watched the Harvey Norman replay, just that attempt from Liz. Well done to stay on side, but Wenda the first to get there. Garvin turns around, finds Jovic. Not confident yet, taking the Suncorp super shot. And Nelson settles for one. 
Austin to Watson. Back to Maloney. And Jackie Newton gets a hand in there. Austin just pulled out on her baseline drive. But the Vixen's lucky to stay in control. Maloney out to Austin. They find Jeeva Mentor with her eyes down and it went straight over the top to Kumwenda. Not often you see that, but I'm sure she was eyeing off an intercept over in the pocket somewhere. Our sideline reporter was very good at watching the defender's eyes and just feeding it straight over the top. <laughs> it's all part of it, isn't it? That bit of deception, a bit of trickery. And Liz Watson, obviously one of the best. Weston goes across the court. Vixens aren't able to use that middle channel that we see them use so often and dominate so often. The Magpies are doing a huge amount of work in defence. Magpies extend their, sorry, Vixens extend their lead by two. Accurate shooting from the Vixens. Garbin steps in, goes up. the moment Katie who would finish in the fourth position well at the moment the magpies would still be in there because the margin is very close Jovic to Brown they're trying to move it on quickly we see this box defense from the Vixens Kelsey Brown just working to the outside of it to that circle edge too early for Garvin to attempt the Suncorp super shot. They settle for one. Just over 10 seconds to play. And Adamson gets a hand to it. A beautiful tip there on that second phase. Impressive first quarter from Casey Adamson in her very first Suncorp super netball game. And there we have it. That is the first quarter here at John Kane Arena. The Vixens leading by one. Remember, it is all on the line. Stay with us, we'll be back soon. Awesome job, awesome inside line pushing up. Just that time where you get in front and now we need to slip back quickly. Same with you. She's in front of you, you've got to slip back. And if you can't feel her, you're not close enough, all right? So I want you to, especially as she's entering in and the other one's got the ball, you need to be able to feel her because if not, she'll just slip through. Okay, we've done some really good jobs on pushing them wide, all right, and getting it through. If she's running to the post, let her go. If you can't go with it and fly at that one coming in, okay? Thanks to Origin Energy. It's quarter time here. And you just heard Kate Upton, the assistant coach, stepping into the head coach position as Nicole Richardson is out. The Magpies, they are down by one goal but there's so much to play and there is so much going on here at John Kane Arena. Let's go down to Maddie Brown. What was happening in the Vixen Tuttle? Look, I was tuning into the attack and the defence end. Coach Di Honey was speaking to Kumwenda, talking about that hold, being in front. She wants to see her work the baseline a little bit more with some short, sharp dodges. Get Mentor moving in defence. They were talking about contesting, but keep in play, continue to build that pressure. And they really want to see that goal attack and wing attack continue to flood down and shut a middle channel to try and pick up some ball and force the Magpies wide. Here we go, we are underway. Second quarter and it's straight up to Nelson. Exactly what we saw in that first quarter. Strong performance from Nelson. 14 from 14. That's what you want from your goal shooter to start the game. Absolutely. And just looking at some of the stats, it's interesting that the, the feeds for the Magpies are fairly evenly split across the goal attack, wing attack and centre. For the Vixens, however, it is all coming through Lizzie Watson. So she's been quite dominant in terms of that goal assist stat so far. So obviously some of what Kate Upton was addressing at quarter time there, trying to shut down that feed going into the Vixen shooters. So we see another one over the top for Nelson. Really accurate feeds into Nelson. I feel like they're finding it. Is it, do you bring on Olivia Lewis? Do you change it up? Do you mix it up for the Vixens in the goalkeeper position? 
Well, I think sometimes strategically the Vixens can actually just change up what they're doing, whether it's that two-on-one that comes back in the circle, um, denies that first ball going, gives them a little bit more time to have a go at something else. So they do have personnel changes, but as well as strategic changes that they could be making. As we see from Wenda, nice hold over the back and just an easy one for her. Jovic in attack for the Magpies. Adamson. Miscommunication between the Magpies players and there's absolutely no surprise at all about that because there's been very little training. Kelsey Brown who flicks it back in to Jackie Newton for the pickup. Newton to Jovic. Brown waiting on the sideline. And she's doing a mountain of work in attack for the Magpies. We've seen it all season and she continues it on today. Joe Weston contesting that one on the outside. Vixen sitting in there, two on one in the circle. Two on one on Nelson. And a beautiful set play there. Molly Jovic just screening that space for Garvin. And that second phase of that play, Malik Jovic just rolled out of that screen and got the ball on the um, circle edge. We see Nelson leading the Nissan net points with Watson and Kamwenda close behind. Let's get across to Maddie Brown on the sideline. Look, I wanted to sp speak about the Magpies' defence there. They're really doing a lot of work in allowing Liz Watson to get the first phase on the centre pass. Where is she most dominant? On the circle edge. So keep her off there. Disconnection between the goalers is starting to happen. You can see in the circle, Wenda and Austin looking like they're struggling to find space. They need to keep moving rather than getting caught on those bodies. So there might be a change in this Vixens attack then shortly. You are sitting right near Simone McInnes. How is her energy down there? Look, she's asking them for lots of options to go again. Um, she wants defensive pressure in that middle channel because we see Brown being able to, as you said, give and go, kind of have the ball in a string and control that Magpies attack end. So she wants more defensive pressure and she wants more options rather than just stagnant leads in attack. Watson, ball in hand. Who can she find? Austin in position. But the Magpies' defence, they are having a go at everything, and why wouldn't they? Molly Jovic with the sneaky hand in, thought she got away with that one. The Vixens leading by one. Garvin, quick to get the centre pass, but Austin gets her hand in there. We know Austin loves to get involved in the defensive play for the Vixens. They'll be very happy about it. Maloney. Finds the top, finds Kumwenda, but it's a stepping call. Costly, the coach killers, the stepping and the breaking. Key for the Magpies now just to settle and work this one through. That road so well travelled and interestingly that high ball is actually coming from that middle channel B. So they're not actually being forced wide and, and having to launch that ball from one of the sidelines. It's coming from off the circle but it's still in that middle channel. Another stepping call against Liz Watson. Second time the Vixens have been in attack and there's been a stepping. Jovic to Adamson. Balancing on the sideline and Weston flies through. Brilliant intercept from Joe Weston. And the intercept stats are even for both teams. And the scores all even. Vixen's taking the lead by one. Kelsey Brown just busting through that two-on-one at the centre pass. One thing that's interesting to note is how much access the coaches have. If they're at home with COVID health and safety protocols, if you're a Nicole Richardson, you can't just call in to assistant coach Kate Upton at any time. There is actually rules around that. We saw it with Bryony Aikul yesterday with the New South Wales Swiss when she was out. So what is allowed to happen is there is an officiated call where five minutes into the first quarter, five minutes to go in the first quarter, Nicole Richardson is allowed to talk to Kate Upton. Then, no communication throughout the second quarter at half time. They're allowed to discuss things, and then she's allowed back to discuss things at 
five minutes to go in the third quarter. So it's actually all listened to by the officiators on the sideline because they need to. Now, there's been a HDF tactical timeout, so Nicole Richardson doesn't get to have a say in this one. Kate Upton will take it away, but let's take a listen to Simone McInnes. Play free and confident. Let's go. And when we get that ball, because we've got some good ball, then it's just that little bit of composure, bringing it out. So have that movement before, a little composure. I think we want to get a prelim in rather than getting in these long leads, which they're covering us. And um, we're getting quite shallow down in the attack end. So make sure, even though we want to work the ball, but let's have somebody that's driving through as well and creating that space. Some good love, some good pressure there. Great awareness through that middle on that set of pass. I think that's the one we've just got to be aware of. Yeah, and Joe, yes. I want to discuss the comeback. Yeah, come back. Not yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. Like on that last one when you're back and then force the, the shot. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. Simone's called for a composure there. That's up to us. We're getting ball. Let's do the work rate to play it smart to circle edge and score. Now, game, last 10 minutes, we push this out. Let's go. Big top three. Up 10. A very calm Melbourne Vixens, I would say. Yeah, and interesting, uh, similar to what Maddie was speaking about earlier, that change in the um, in the Vixens' defence. Simone McInnes just asking there for Joe Weston to drop back into the circle on Nelson a little bit more in that two-on-one um, and trying to get Garvin to take over some of that shooting load, asking the question, can she do it? We'll see. Austin straight across to Maloney. Takes the drive herself up to Kumwenda. Let's get across to Maddie Brown. How were the Magpies? Look, it seems like both huddles were very defensive focused because it's so tight with this scoreboard. It's all about who can get the next game. As we see, Kira Austin get a nice little tip and Kate Maloney do a roll somewhere with no one near her. That was interesting. <laughs> Let's get a replay on that one, thank you. Um, but it was all about the defensive pressure and how they can shut down the middle channel, force them wide, um, and even just kind of working their footwork off the body. You see Jeeva Mental moving, trying to manipulate her body to try and get that confusion in the feeder space as to where they can feed the ball to Kumwenda. Well, you called for it, Nate Brown. We're going to get that Harvey Norman highlight. Kumwenda to Austin. Quick little give and go between the shooters. Vixens extend their lead out by three. Let's take a look at this. You can see Kate Maloney in the background. Now, Renee Ingalls is in the interchange box. There's a HCF tactical timeout. She has the wind defense bib on. The Magpies have called it. We're going to go straight into the Magpies huddle to take a listen to Kate Upton. Okay, with that, as long as out the front, okay, it's almost like you two are higher or you're 1v1 and they're doing that split in the circle. Okay? That's a five minute block. Five minute block, go Okay. It's fine. We go back to our original game plan. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Build momentum in attack. Make sure we get the early ball. Hold that front place defense. Don't get caught on body. Let's lift here. This is our time to reset and push. Three, two, one. Good job. Well, can you believe it? Renee Ingalls is taking the court for the Collingwood Magpies for the very first time. She didn't even realize until yesterday that this was a possibility. One game of VNL during the week, three years of no netball, and she gives <laughs> a little tap on the side to Liz Watson, her former Melbourne Vixens teammate. Now we know Casey Adamson, it was her making her debut today, but eight penalties, a bit costly, and it's good to make the change for the Magpies. Yeah, and I think she's she's had those two turnovers, just that little bit of a misunderstanding um, in the attack um, for Adamson as well. So good time to make a change, but she was doing a fairly good job at staying really close marking. And let's not forget, she was given the task in her debut of marking the Australian captain. <laughs> I know. Best wing attack in the world. Pretty so tough ask. Magpies, they're bringing the speed. They want the ball in quickly. And both the Vixens defenders end up on the ground. A couple of Skittles falling over at the back there. Nelson does it easily. Two goals the difference. Ingalls hands over Watson. Austin goes to swing it. Great pressure from the Magpies. A held ball just shutting down all of the options. Jovic. 
Ingalls with her first touch on the ball, give and go, getting that ball speed going for the Magpies. Listen to the crowd every time Renee touches the ball. But the Vixens, they, another pick up to their name. Kawenda looks in, mentored, directing play. Straight into that front hold for Kamwenda. Strong positioning from Kamwenda to hold off Mentor. Kamwenda wants the crowd to get behind. There's Renee Ingalls' husband and her brother sitting there watching on the sidelines. Also known as Joe Ingalls. <laughs> Great take by Shimona Nelson. Renee's husband in this stadium. That's right. <laughs> Weston to Kate Maloney. Watson finds the middle. Not the edge, but Maloney does. Two goals the difference. Not in the power five yet. But just under six minutes to play. A miss and a key rebound for Jeeva Mentor as we see Gabby Sinclair take the court just behind play. Jovic swings it across to Ingalls. Brown, but Eddie gets her hands in there. Strong defensive pressure, menacing pressure from the Vixens. And just cruising along the baseline from when the finds Austin. Maddie, how are things down there over there? Look, it's, the getting, it's getting heated, I think. You know, there's only three goals in it. But Renee Ingalls coming on extremely good, um, obviously, attacking uh, for them in uh, out of defence as well. But I want to talk about the Vixens' attack. When they've got handy ball, Katie, they look a little bit hesitant. They've only ever got one option. It would be great to see if they can get that little bit of a pulley system, one going long, one going wide. We see Kamwenda holding for that backspace. Maybe a backspace to, to punch forward. Is that what you'd like to see from the goalers? Well, I think you talk about those mo multiple options. I think the first, second ball is actually there for the Vixens, but they're not giving that one, and there's nothing else coming after it. So I would like to see them just release that first one and keep the ball speed moving. So there we go. There's a pop forward from Kamwenda for you, Maddie. Taking those penalties, just walking her way under the circle. Kamwenda getting up and about. We are in the Power Five now, and Suncorp Super Shots remember that everyone that is sunk in the game today, Suncorp donate $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation. Brown to Nelson. Do they want two? Do they want one? Sinclair's in the circle. Here she goes. The double defense over the shot. Just talk. Talked her out of that one, but the nice over the top to Nelson. Keeping them in touch. Not only does the pressure build for the attack end when the power five is here, but for the defenders as well, which option do you protect? Brilliant shooting from Kira Austin. And we look the at the attack. scores at the moment. Nelson with 23 goals to her name, the dominant shooter on the court. Sinclair to Brown. They look up. Just a shove in the back from Weston. And another shove off the ball. Keep an eye on that matchup. Gabby Sinclair and Joe Weston. The pressure is mounting for both sides. But the Magpies, they seem to be shouldering everything that the Vixens are throwing at them. Miss by from Maloney. Kamwenda can't chase it up. Two goals the difference. The Magpies back into attack. Ingalls to Newton. Can't get it there. Kamwenda gets a hand in. Ingalls shakes her head. She's disappointed in that pass, but surely she can't be. <laughs> Probably hasn't thrown a ball for a couple of years. Such is the perfectionist of the elite athlete. You can't switch that part of your brain off. 
Nelson fumbles that one. It goes straight over the baseline. Maloney looks forward. High, loopy pass to Weston. Watson goes long. No one in the circle. Here's Austin. Huge amount of physical pressure from Jeeva Mentor. The Magpies also forcing the Vixens to take some really long pass options. There you have it, a Suncorp super shot from Kira Austin. That's her first. And this box set up from the Vixens, Kelsey Brown just weaving her way through. So let's have a look at the live ladder. At the moment, if the scores stay as they are, the Magpies would be out of the four and the Swifts will come in to that final four. What a performance if the New South Wales Swifts end up in the final four. So as we spoke about earlier though, if the scores stay low, the margin needs to be tighter for the Magpies. But as the score gets higher, up above 50, um, the, the score can be closer to, um, or can be, sorry, a greater, a greater margin for the Magpies to still be in. So as it stands though, Magpies out of the four. And it's another HCF tactical timeout. This time it's been called by the Magpies. Interesting, there's only just over 40 seconds to play, but let's take a listen into the Magpies huddle. I want someone to drive down for depth, not necessarily to receive, but I want you to get more depth before you punch back. Jump over on your side, please. Yep. Wanting them to get a bit more depth in their attack and not necessarily to give the ball to them, but it is actually widening where the defenders are um, in order to create some space in the Magpies attack. The Vixens leading by five, ball in hand. We have 49 seconds to play in this second quarter. Weston takes the centre pass. Watson to Kumwenda. That's those long passes that the Magpies are forcing the Vixens to make across three channels of the court. Jackie Newton has come into the game and done a great job. She's really got a huge presence out there with her hands over. She definitely does, and she's she's one that we know that she can get ball back, but obviously Jodie Ann Ward is a huge out for them as well. She had a season best performance, not only for herself, but for every single goal defense in the league. Brown off Last balance, week. straight up to Nelson. Why wouldn't you just put it up in the air? <laughs> Maloney will hang on to this. They want the center pass to start off the second half. That's been a huge second quarter for the Melbourne Vixens. They win the second quarter by four. Overall, they take the lead by five. You're watching Fox Netball. You see Kira Austin from the Vixens with co-captain Liz Watson talking to the umpires. This was in the halftime break. Then we also saw Jeeva Mentor, the Collingwood captain, go up to the umpires. What do you think they're discussing, Katie? Well, usually uh, they're... Uh, they've got to be posing questions to the umpires to, to get some answers out of the um, out of the umpires with what they're um, asking asking them about, I guess. But um, with quite often, it's just trying to draw their attention to something, isn't it, for the players and, and just getting some clarification around something. So we'll see if anything changes as a result of those discussions out on court. And we're just going across live now to the Collingwood Magpies coach Kate Upton. 
Kate, firstly, when did you find out you're going to take that head coach role again? Oh, later in the week, um, B. So it's interesting, round one and round 14. Thanks, Richo. <laughs> <laughs> and no pressure at all, like, on this game. None <laughs> whatsoever. I feel like we're back in 2019, but I just don't have Richo with me. <laughs> How, uh, what did you say to the players at halftime? Oh, look, we just really are focused on the game plan and process driven. If we look at um, our centre pass conversions, it's too low. Vixens are sitting up, you know, around 100% on their conversion rate and our long court. So pretty much it's just making sure that we make good choices, but we've got the options there to make good choices. And Kate, I'm wondering, um, in terms of trying to keep this margin as narrow as possible, what's the strategy that you'll be putting into play with that two point shot in this second half? Just making sure that one, we're accountable for our player in that process and not allowing the goal is to get in and work together to create. And one more. What was Jeeva Mental asking the umpires at halftime? Uh, I think it was something Shimmy spoke to her. So I actually can't answer that question. But I think it was around inside, Shimmy inside, taking the ball and being able to take the ball cleanly. Nicely said. Thank you so much for joining us. Kate, enjoy the second half. As Jackie Newton comes flying through with an intercept for the Magpies. Hey. Renee Ingalls still on court and flies through to help in attack. And at half time, we've seen Rani Samerson take the court in that goal shooter bib as well. So, change is happening. Sinclair, quick double play. Landed, but straight to Nelson. The safe hands of Shimona Nelson. She's shooting at 100%. Incredible accuracy. There's Rani Samerson on your screen. She has been out injured for a number of weeks, been battling with a knee injury, had some small um, surgery on her knee and has been playing in the VNL to get herself back and ready to go. Yeah, it, obviously a little bit of a frustrating injury. The Vixens didn't think it was going to be as many weeks as it has been, but she's been fighting, obviously, behind the scenes to get herself right and back for finals. And a huge, you know, you would you would say a trump card sitting on the bench for, for the Vixens, but she's out there. We spoke, spoke about it pre-game, just the incredible stacked bench that the Vixens have. They can bring on a multitude of changes that are going to have a significant impact on the game. And smart from Simone McInnes to coming back from weeks being out, putting Samerson in goal shooter, her more familiar position. You see Kira Austin just taking her time getting up there. A lot of physical pressure from the Magpies defenders. I wonder if that was part of the conversation that Austin was having with the umpires at halftime. Just see that. I mean, it, there's not, it doesn't look like there's much in it. It's just been constantly happening all game, both ends of the court. Yeah, and Magpies penalties up to 34 now, so... One to keep a watch on. Vixens out by four. The Swiss will be very happy to see at the moment they will be in the finals. And the Vixens come up with the ball. Eddie to Weston. Body on body, Jovic and Maloney. Unlucky for Jovic, she was in the front position. Fighting hard to get her turnover back. Vixen line up in the middle of the court. Maloney back to Weston. Opening that wide side. We've seen with a lot of these defensive setups that they're defending these two channels. If you swing it across to the other side, it actually opens up for the footy fans, the, the fat side of the field. <laughs> the, the open side of the court for them to play down the sideline. Great hold from Samerson, great shot from Samerson. Confident shooting, she really owns it out there when she steps out on court. For, for a young shooter, the confidence is great to see. And it is her superpower, that uh, confidence, the way that she just turns and shoots, nothing phases her. Vixens are out by six. Magpies, if they want to make the four, they need to hurry up. They need to start scoring. Sinclair to Brown. Back to Sinclair. Finding that beautiful space at the top oh, of the circle. Blocked by Emily Maddox. A little fake jump and a tip on the second one. Very well timed from Maddox. 
interesting to see Kelsey Brown looking over at Kate Upton. Have a look at this Harvey Norman replay. Doesn't get better than that, Emily Maddox. Let's go across to Maddie Brown. Look, I wanted to talk about, obviously, the injection of Rani Sanderson into the game. I think it's really smart by the Vixens to do it now. You want to get a bit of minutes into her. You want to get her confidence on your shot. Because if it does come down to the crunch and she needs to shoot from a long range, she's definitely got it. Magpies have started to come out and they've put a bit of physical presence on the Vixens, but they're getting pulled up. So they need to pull it back, be a little bit more disciplined and start to go back to that game planning attack of chipping away. They're getting a little bit long and not doing a lot of prep work so that uh, the dodges, the roll-offs, trying to the, everything is contested for the Magpies at the moment, which is why the Vixens are getting those hands on ball. Keep an eye on Maddie. The Magpies bench, Zoe Davies has got the goal defense bib on. I think she might be entering the game soon. But the Vixens, they're out by five. Samerson doing a great job on the court. Combining well with Kira Austin, who, if all reports are true, is back in the Australian Diamonds lineup for the Commonwealth Games. What a year she has had. Getting herself back out there on court. She's been building in that confidence across the season, hasn't she? It's a nice little pop on that baseline. And has been the answer for the Melbourne Vixens. Last year, they really struggled to find an answer in those shooting positions. After yourself and Tegan Phillip <laughs> departed with the club. And there was a Lizzie Watson size hole there. There was well, a Lizzie Watson, there. But, but it was. They needed to find a shooter, and they did through Kira Austin. Mannix grabs hold of it, pulls the ball in. Vixens try and fly through an attack. There's Zoe Davies now on your screen making her presence felt as she enters the contest. Samerson. Not in the power five, but she doesn't care. She's still going to attempt it from anywhere in the circle. You can sense that, that little bit of extra physicality, the desperation for the Magpies. Their season on the line right now. See the live ladder, the Swiss, in the final four at the moment. If we look at the missing net points, Liz Watson sitting on 57. Renee Ingalls unable to stop the impact that Liz Watson's having. Followed closely by the wing attack down the other end of the court in Kelsey Brown. And then the two goal shooters. Sophie Garvin just re-entering the game there. Oh, brilliant feed. Ingles to Nelson. Adds goal assist to her stats. Probably the first time that they've ever connected as players. But the experience of Ingles, she hasn't lost it. As the Magpies look at them sitting in their box defence, a Harvey Norman replay. What a brilliant ball from Ingles. Watson to Austin. Every time the Magpies defenders playing Austin a lot of close attention. And the Vixens extend their lead by eight. And Kelsey Brown. Oh. Again, she tries for a second time. This time, a bit too much on it for Nelson. Adjusting things as they go. He's going to the first half. It's just a real calm feeling from the Vixens now, isn't it? They didn't have that in that first quarter. Yeah, and I think, you know, we look at the last six games the Vixens have had on the run. They've had six wins and they've had those key moments throughout the game where they've controlled things. And you take a huge amount of confidence leading into finals especially, that in all of those games, the margin hasn't been any greater than six, but they have controlled the moments, the moments that matter. We see the time in possession there for the Vixens. 63, Samerson puts up another beautiful shot. That time in possession really explains exactly what you're saying. They hold the ball, they're okay to keep possession of the ball. They're not trying to force it in. The Magpies though, they need that urgency. They need to be able to force it in and get some shots. Brilliant ball, great connection from Garvin to Nelson. Margin back to nine. Garvin adds that height. 
makes it harder for the Vixens. Joe Weston, she stumbles, loses possession. Magpies are back into attack. Garbin out of the circle, straight up again, but Manic, she's in front. Her footwork to get into that position, she knew it was coming in. Great positioning, just the placement on that pass, needed to go a little bit further from Garbin into the safe hands of Nelson. Ooh. Two intercepts for Joe Weston, two intercepts for Emily Mannix. The and Vixens are leading the way. And another opportunity here for the Magpies to peg one back. Ingles to Brown. Garbin, Joe Weston, hands up, forcing her to go back. Brown receives it on the edge and an easy direct pass to Nelson. And the Magpies, their centre pass. Garvin to Nelson again. Will Sinclair come on in this power five? Or will they leave it the way they are? Maddie Brown, what are you noticing out there? Oh, well, look, we're going to go to a HCF timeout to the Magpies, but I think they're going to talk about how they need to get some uh, gain possession. The only way to save this, this game is to get those turnovers and then put that pressure on the scoreboard. Sinclair looks like she might be injected. She needs to put up those two pointers. Now's the time. Let's not wait till the fourth quarter. Let's get it done now in the third. Okay, I'll let you go to the Vixens. Let's listen to the Magpies. Great. Make sure we get it to the circle edge now. You play your role, okay? You enter in, actually draws Joe, and we go over. All right? Yeah, we're gonna go one, but we keep switching between it. The change out's working, but we can't just go early all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll go one to start with, and then we made it some triangles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. 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 They called the timeout. You heard the power five come into play. They want to take the shot. They need to take the shot. They were, were talking about that discipline. They've had a few that, that where they launched that ball from and had a couple of errors come through. So they spoke about that discipline, working the ball to circle edge, uh, making sure that they've got the goal attack entering to draw Joe, which leaves a, a good one-on-one -on -one with Nelson. So expect a little bit more of that discipline. And I wonder if they're going to try and pull the trigger on the, on uh, some of those super shots. And Maddie, what did you hear from the Vixens? Look, the Vixens were all about going to the basics. They want to just take care of the ball when they're in possession, work that short, sharp ball here. As I said, they're not in any rush. Just continue to provide those options. McInnes was talking about punching through, making sure there's one option, another option, trying to keep those Magpies defenders active. Magpies, they need to start flying for some ball, but Vixens are going to be smart and work it nice and low to try and avoid that from happening. So far this game, there's been two super shots from the Melbourne Vixens, none from the Collingwood Magpies. Samerson, though, she gets another attempt. And this is where the penalties, they can be quite costly, can't they? They definitely can. Samerson adding to the, uh, ruining the party for the Magpies at the moment. She's known for her Suncorp super shots and she's bringing them to John Kane Arena. Ingles to Garvin. Strong, powerful pass. And a quick over one to Nelson. Just floats it over. Magpies settle for one. Vixens leading by eight. Over three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. And as you can see with the score breakdown, the Vixens have won the first half. They won both quarters and they're winning this third quarter. Emerson, a smart little offload there. Just for the one, keeping the score ticking over for the Vixens. Nice and steady from Kira Austin. You can see her goal chart. Two super shots to her name. Impressive performance. Watson looks up. 
double plays with Austin. It's a contact call against Rani Samerson. The Magpies, they need to make this count. They need to get on the scoreboard. Davies to Brown. Looks long. Mannix is out flying, probably a little bit too early. And this is an opportunity, one of those moments for the Magpies here. They've got a defender out. They need to make sure they're making them pay. And Darwin with the Suncorp super shot. The first one for the Magpies. And that's exactly what they need to keep in touch with the Vixens. Maloney to Watson. Calmly being forced to go back. And a turnover for the Magpies. An offside call against Kate Eddy. Jovic to Garvin. Garvin looks up. She puts it in. It wasn't pretty, but it got there. Can you sense the fight back? Is it coming? <laughs> I think it's coming. I think it's coming because there's another HCF tactical timeout. You can see the live ladder at the moment. The Swifts will be very happy, but I'm sure they're very nervous. As are the Magpies. You see Kate Upton on the phone to Nicole Richardson. This is the time in the last five minutes of the third quarter she's allowed to speak to her. Let's take a listen in to the Vixen's huddle. We stop getting jacked, so we just do those little shallow moves. So let's make sure that we're still driving through. We've got the options at the back there, and we've got that punch through the bottom. Let's go, come on. Right, come on in here. We let them back in. We let the short one go quickly. Oh, we walk it. Yeah. 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 Well, you had a bit of an insight into the Vixens huddle. They are pumped up. They are ready to go. Both teams are back out very quickly. <laughs> They've still got 30 seconds on their timeout. They want to get this underway. You would think in terms of the um, momentum here, you would think that the Magpies are wanting to keep things going and the Vixens probably can afford to be slowing things down, taking their time with things. So that will definitely come into play and we see all of the time-wasting tactics come out, don't we, Bianca? <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And you see the last 10 goals. Collingwood have had the last two. Maddie, what have you made of what's happening over there at the benches? Look, the Mad Pies all fired up. It is now. They talked about it. It is go time. No time to wait for someone else to do it. Everyone needs to be on. We need to start hitting those two-point shots and let's continue to put that pressure on the Vixens in attack. Gabby Sinclair. No surprises. She wants the ball and she wants it in Suncorp super shot range. She gets it. Can she do it? There might have been a little tip there from Joe Weston. Brilliant pressure from the Vixens defenders. They know exactly where the Magpies want to take the shot. Maloney to Mannix. Through Eddie Weston, there's bodies on the ground. Austin across to Eddie. Long arms of Renee Ingalls. Mentor has a crack, can't get it. Samerson to Austin. So reliable under the post cure, Austin. She's been that all game today. That's her 15th goal for the Vixens. It's great to see that shooting, uh, the dynamic change in that shooting circle. A lot of the time we are seeing Rani Samerson out on leads, which leaves the shooting circle open for Kira Austin back in there um, to really dominate that circle, take some more of that shooting load. Sweet, huge push in the back. Rani Samerson just gave an almighty shove. So the Magpies get another shot. Sinclair to Brown. Look at Nelson's hand. She's got all the space behind her towards the post. They don't want to get it there, though. Mannix is doing a great job. Jostling for position. She gets a hand on it. Brilliant footwork from the Vixens defender. And that is three-quarter time here at John Kane Arena. There's seven goals, the difference. Don't go anywhere. We have one more quarter to go. Okay, so listen up here. It's really important now that we play our roles, all right? You need to make sure that every centre pass we're connecting with each other.
other. You two are connecting. All right, we know very clearly what we're doing. You're looking for that space and you're filling that fat side of the court. You are on every single ball. First, second, third, fourth. You guys are making sure that they are under pressure every single time they take it. We want them to have the ball going, no, 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 okay? And then we get it. Body angles to be able to create for it and you two run your feet on the line of the ball. When we get it, I don't want someone waiting back watching, breath, to then get ready to punch up, all right? Be in every moment and back each other in that moment. And if there's a loose ball, you throw your goddamn body on it, all right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go, girls. 15 minutes. Let's go. A very passionate Kate Upton, the, the assistant coach slash head coach for the Collingwood Magpies. It's quarter time, three quarter time, brought to you by Origin Energy. Let's go down to Maddie. What was happening in the Vixens camp? Look, the Vixens are very aware of the state of play for the Magpies. They know that they're going to have to start putting the ball in from everywhere if they still want to be in this contest. So they said, let's build the pressure in defence and have your eyes up. Have a big few crack at those contests. Let's get our hands on the board. They don't want to go inside and try and cease up with this game. Yes, there are, but they need to continue to push and build ahead. Joe Weston on the ground, wrestling for possession. Both teams want to win this. Forget about what the finals mean. It's all about your pride is on the line in this Melbourne Derby. Derby, Derby, which one are you? I don't know. I think I chop and change how I say it. <laughs> Garvin back into the goal attack position. Maloney to Watson. Out to Weston. Garvin hits the deck in the middle third. She's up. She's okay. She's smiling. Austin to Samison. The Vixens keep their attack in. Now they finish that third quarter. And why wouldn't you? Threading the needle through those two defenders as we look at the live ladder just a reminder for you that the percentage is at play so at the moment it's the percentage that is keeping the magpies out of the final four maloney and brown both very much want to have the ball in their hands Nelson, another goal assist there for Kelsey Brown, sitting on 27 goal assists for the game. Very much coming through her hands. Six goal lead to the Melbourne Vixens. Austin finds Watson at the top, back to Austin. She goes, misses, and the Magpies get another chance. What have you made of Zoe Davies in a goal defence against Kira Austin? She's brought some energy um, coming on there, hasn't she? She's brought a little bit of that physicality, a bit of that urgency for the Magpies' defence, which sometimes creates some turnovers for them. So I feel like she has injected herself well into this game. And something for all the young players out there. Zoe Davies hasn't come through the traditional pathways of Neville Victoria. You know, she really did struggle to find her place and now she certainly has in getting the opportunities out there in Suncorp Super Netball this season. Can't get better than this, playing in front of 10,000 people at a packed out John Kane Arena. In the final regular season game for the uh, Suncorp Super Netball. The Vixens, they cough it up and the Magpies a back into attack. It's four goals, the difference. Nelson, twinkle toes on that baseline, manages it to get it back. She sings another with the centre pass to follow. Look at the live ladder now. Katie, the Magpies weren't in it before on percentage, but they are now. That's how close it is. One goal can make all the difference for a team fighting for their place in finals and spare a thought for the Swifts sitting at home. <laughs> Watching from their couch we heard with absolutely team. nothing that they can do about absolutely it. Absolutely nothing they can do. The destiny is in the Magpies' hands. Watson looks around. Who can she get it to? We heard Kate Upton in that 
three-quarter time saying that, that she really wanted them to shut down all of their options for them to look and go, no, can't go there, can't go there. Exactly what we saw there. Ram Ramison. Samison. <laughs> Rani Samison. I can't even get my words out. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Austin struggling to find an option. Back to Samison. And the Magpies, they're trying to get the rebound. They couldn't get it. Maddie, what's happening? You can see uh, Maui Kunwenda obviously sitting on the sideline waiting to be injected into the game again. Wouldn't be surprised. They team talk about the 10 minutes compared to the power five. It's all about chipping that scoreboard over. You see Nelson down the other end for the Magpies coming into play. Vixen's getting pulled a little bit in defence, so they all want to pick that back up. But Magpies, they have to be within this mix with these power five coming into play in just five minutes. Nelson. Rebound for Nelson. Just picking up that short shot, keeping their scoreboard ticking over. Two goals the difference. The Magpies, Zoe Davies goes flying through. She wants to play finals with the Magpies. As she, look at her lurking out there, trying to get the intercept, trying to pick off any ball they can. Austin, she steadies it. Kumwenda, hands in the air. They want the crowd behind them. It's a Magpies home crowd. Brown to Garvin to Nelson. Such a strong hold. Maddox is doing everything she can to manoeuvre around Shimona Nelson's body, but Sh Nelson's just too strong. The Vixen. Rubaloni. Watson just standing back off the centre pass, allowing Austin to do it so she can get a deeper second phase. Kalenda entering back onto the court, wanting to play in those pressure moments. Vixen's by three. Jovic and Eddie oh. trying to disrupt play as much as they can. Mannix out of play. Nelson again. What a performance from Shimona Nelson. She is leading her team in this game. 41 from 41 for Nelson. Standing up when it counts. The Magpies, they're in the four at the moment. With how the percentages are working. Their box defense is in play. Hands over everything they can. The black and white is smothering this court and they get the ball back off the Vixens. Huge work from Molly Jovic. And great team defense. Shutting down everything, forcing a loose ball over the sidelines. Two goals of difference. Jovic looks up. Ball ends up in Garvin's hands, but there's Emily Maddox. She got it right the second time. I've been really impressed by how Emily Maddox has been constantly adjusting. She misses a few and then gets her hands on another one. Eddie, Kelsey Brown with the tip, and Garvin with the pickup. Sophie Garvin has grabbed the ball strongly. It's in Nelson's hands now. Exactly what they need. And look at Sophie Garvin and Kate Upton. They're, they're talking to each other. There's so much in this game. Kate Upton wanted that HCF tactical timeout. The Vixens have called it. Katie, there's one goal of difference. There's 10,000 people here at John Kane Arena. Let's go and take a listen into Kate Upton and what she's got to say to the Magpies. Okay, so as you enter, don't sit in the space. I want you to connect with it so that she's not, because what she's doing is hedging you to go back. So I want you to actually balk that one to so, then it goes, all right? So we want to take her out of that contest to shim, all right? All right, awesome feeling. You too, great cutting. You are coming up just a little bit too early. Okay, that's, all right, then, then draw. Now, another five minutes. That's all. Go, three, two, one, five. Let's go. There you have.
love it. The Magpies want composure. They want a lift. Spare a thought for Ash Brazel, Maggie Lynch, Jodie Ann Ward, all at home. Nicole Richardson watching their team fight it out, cheering them on. And then on the flip side, you've got the New South Wales Swifts waiting eagerly to see what happens. Have they played their last game? Let's go across to Maddie. Look, I mean, both huddles seemed a little bit intense at times. They were talking about trying to say calm with the ball in hand. Vixens just look like they've tensed up, as I said. They want to continue attacking the ball, getting off the body, making sure they punch forward as Garvin gets in. A really important rebound there for the Magpies. But we also see the change for the Vixens. Watson to centre, Maloney to wing defence, and Mundy into that wing attack position. I think to create a little bit more dynamic punching movement to try and keep that ball in their possession. Great play from Kumwenda. We've seen this change in the Vixens lineup several times this season. It has worked for them. What does Hannah Mundy bring into the game at wing attack? Well, she's such a strong athlete, isn't she? Um, in terms of what she provides for the Vixens. Still getting that depth and the really good touch on the feed. Doesn't miss a beat there with Lizzie Watson, but obviously now you've got the two of them with that incredible speed and we see just that strength, not wanting to force that one over the top. Yes, Magpies defence doing a great job. You can see Zoe Davies and Jeeva just having really great understanding of that switch, knowing which one they were going to cover. Almost came up with the ball. Kira Austin. She's confident. She wants to try and win this one for the Vixens. Ingalls Maddox comes flying out. She strikes that one. If in doubt, go high for Kelsey Brown. Nelson strong on the take. Sophie Garvin has really had an impact on this game, especially in this final quarter. Definitely has. Scores are even here at John Kane Arena. Mentor flies for it. Mundy finds Austin. And there's our live ladder at the moment. The Collingwood Magpies are in the top four. And again, it's based on percentage. But if the Magpies win this game, it doesn't matter. As we spoke about earlier, though, Bianca, so as the scores get higher, the margin can actually be a little bit greater and the Magpies still make the finals, even if they lose. Within, steps across. Within about three goals. I'm leaving all of that to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're my mathematician here today, Katie. That is a Watson. Lands on the edge. You can hear the siren. And a strong ball pulled in. Balancing. Scores are even. The power five is now in play. This is when the damage can be done. From either side. Listen to the crowd. Kawenda fights for the rebound. I've never seen anything like it. Key rebound. And the confidence for Kira Austin to go for that two-point shot, knowing that she's got the rebounding power of Kumwenda under there. Kumwenda. Happy with one. Can't get it. Lucky to get a second shot. Look at Kawenda, she's saying, just calm down, calm down. And she's calm and collected on that one. Look at the Harvey Norman replay here. As they fight for the rebound. Two magpies and one vixen comes up with it. Ingalls to Jovic. Let's get across to Maddie Brown. What would this mean for the magpies to oh, make the finals, Maddie? It is the desperation from both teams. If you talk about, don't even worry about finals right now. It is just the desperation to win this game right now. But for the magpies, they were eighth in 2020, sixth in 2021. To make the finals, they're a proud club. They've only been around for a short period of time, but they know that they've got a team just like that that can fight. Fight in the finals, they just want an opportunity to be there. So you can see it in the way that they're playing. The youngster Zoe Davies, she comes up with the ball, allows the Magpies another chance. Jovic goes 
getting out of control. It's up towards me, Molly. Straight up. Sorry, do we need to wipe her? You would think. <laughs> Look at the Harvey Norman replay. Jovi hits Watson. We've got over three minutes to play in this final quarter. One goal the difference. The Vixens leading by one. Magpies, though, still very much in the final four and will play finals if scores stay similar to what they are now. Okay, right there. A little box for the Magpies to work through. Zoe Davies on ball side, back up on the line there. Very important. And one through the legs of Kelsey Brown. Unfortunately, popping up a turnover at a key moment here. Can the Vixen stay composed? Austin. Easy one across to Watson as Watson takes another drive onto the edge. They go back to Maloney. Candy having the back up there on the transverse line. Mundy walks one way through the legs of Watson and it goes straight out of court. This came as it all, Katie. <laughs> Who would have thought the two wing attacks, the ball goes straight through their legs down either end of the court. There's yes, Mundy on Ingles. Davies, back to Mentor. Magpies are resetting. Kelsey, oh, Liz Watson coming through. And umpires deem that play on. Magpies end up with the ball. Back down their attack end. Huge amount of intercepts for the Vixen. They're leading seven to three. You wouldn't know that with the scoreline. One goal, the difference. Now, Scores are even. Just over two minutes to play, and surprise, surprise, we have a HCF tactical timeout. At the moment, the Magpies sitting in that final four will play finals if things stay as they are right now. Let's take a listen in to the Magpies huddle. Now, listen, clearly we want to win this, but remember the outcome, all right? Focus on making sure I feel like you can stay one on one. Don't jump on the hands. believe it Katie not just the performance for the magpies right here what they've been you know, put up against all the COVID chaos we spoke about pre-game missing so many of their gun players and their coach and still out here performing so much adversity and you know this is where I think that resilience the fact that they've been through two years of playing seasons under COVID protocols under you know being in hubs all of this stuff it shows that you know, no matter what kind of knocks the team can take, they can still stand up and perform, can't they? Sure can. The Vixens through Maloney. She'll get it back. You can see the Vixens players just looking around. Rani Samerson has come into goal attack. And Kira Austin is on the bench. Watson, what does she do with it? Out to Samerson. From Wenda. Hand in the air. She wants it over for one. And the Vixens extend their lead. Jovic to Brown. Ingles, what an incredible performance from Renee Ingles after three years of not playing. Ball's being reset to Brown. The jostle in the circle, the two on one on Nelson. They know she's threatening. Garvin, a little shuffle shot to work her way closer to the one. A miss from Sophie Garvin and the Vixens are back in control. Tonic, talk to about Watson. pressure. Let's have a look at the live ladder. The Magpies, they're still in the finals with the scoreline as is. 
the Vixens keeping possession. They're steadying it, they're calm. 40 seconds on the clock, Kate Upton is out of her seat. Weston goes offside, gets a bit of a shove. The Vixens play these scenarios at training, every team does. And the Vixens now take the centre pass. Live ladder, let's take a look. The Magpies, they are still in it. Two goals the difference, they are still in the final four. Ten seconds to play. What happens from here? From Wenda. Suncorp, a super shot for from Wenda. She misses the goal. The Vixens win the game, but the Magpies make the finals. What an incredible game, Katie. John Kane around, the fans are standing up. No one's really sure. The players aren't really sure if they've made it. But we can tell you all the Collingwood Magpies have made the final series in 2022, as have the Vixens.